Hello and welcome to lesson three of Hello and welcome to lesson three of learning functional programming with Rescript. We're covering records, variants, and variant patterns today. So here is the syntax uh, for a record. It's a type, and then we give the type a name. We open some curly braces to declare the body of the record. We name fields. In this case, this field name is field and then we give those fields types. So in this case, this declares the type record, which has the field field of type string. So a valid record would be let my record equal the field and hello world. And its type, as we can see, is record because these match up. So we can give it the type record. So let's do a concrete example here. Let's say we're running a school system and we need to keep track of students. We want to keep track of their age, their name, and what school they're currently attending. So let's write out the type for that. How many fields do you think we'll need? In this case, we need one field for each piece of information we're going to store. We have a name, which is a string, we have an age, which is an int. We have a school, which is also a string. So let's make some examples of students here. Let's let Bob, who is a student, have the name Bob, have the age 18, and go to the school gifted children are us. That is one example of a student. Let's do another example. Let Susan, who's a student, have the name Susan, go be 17 years old, and go to the school, mixed school. All right, so we have two great students. Let's say we want to transfer Susan from mixed school to gifted children are us. Well, you might initially think that we somehow change Susan as she is currently. Um, you might need to know the field, how to access each of these fields to do that. So let's, let's give you that syntax. So to access one of the fields of a student, we do this. So let's Susan's age. This is just the name of the variable. We know her age is going to be an int, and then we call Susan dot the field we want. In this case, it's age. So now Susan's age becomes 17. Let's do the same for Bob, but his name. So we do Bob dot name, and now Bob's name, the variable, has Bob in it. So the best way to actually change Susan's name is not to access the field directly. And we want to, in functional programming, use immutability as much as possible. Meaning Susan is always as she is, and she can never change. So instead, we have to rip Susan apart and take each of her fields to make a new field in the new and approved Susan who is also a student. So let's see how we would do that. So we want to keep the name Susan, keep the age Susan. We're ripping those from the old one. So let's say Susan dot name. And her age is going to be the same as the old Susan. But we want to change her to go to a different school. So we could do gifted children are us instead of Susan dot school because we changed the school from the old one, and we created a new and improved Susan who's not the old one. Rescript has a little syntactic sugar for this. So let's do new, new and improved Susan, who's also a student. So we can just say, okay, what, what, what do I want to replace? I want to replace the school of Susan with the new school. 
and what do I want to take from the old Susan? And we do everything else. So that means take everything from the old Susan and put it in the new Susan. So what happens if we don't actually try to rip Susan apart and let try to change her uh, school directly? So let's try to do that. Susan.school gifted children are us. We get a type error here or a syntax error because we can't actually directly change it. We have to use this method where we take the name and the age from the old Susan or use this syntax and then update the field that we want with the value that we want. So that's how we are able to change Susan. Now let's go over variants. Variants are most closely related to or types. One type or the other. We can also call these sum types as opposed to the product type we saw earlier with the tuple. In this case we use variants where we want to accept more than one type of value. So let's say I had a function which was taking in different types of weather. Of course there's not just only one type of weather. I want to be able to take in multiple types of weather. So let's define all the types of weather that I want my function to be able to take in. And here's the syntax for variants. So we start with a type weather and we declare sunny is one type that weather can be. Rainy is another type that weather can be. And finally snowy is the last type that weather can be. These are all the different ones that can be independently of each other. It can either be sunny, rainy, or snowy. We can also declare it like this on separate lines. Sunny, rainy, or snowy. These are both equal to each other. Right now this doesn't seem too useful because I can't actually attach any data to these. Say I wanted to maybe put a temperature in here as well. Well, I can actually use a constructor to do that. And what a constructor looks like is, let's say, weather with temp. You declare what type the variant is going to take in. So for example, sunny takes in an int, rainy takes in an int, and snowy can also take in an int. We're saying that when we declare one of these types of weather, we have to pass in an int as well. And we'll see later how we get that int back out. So let's declare a weather type. Let's say rainy 50s. And we say rainy 50. And so what is the type of this? Well, we can't say that it's rainy directly. We have to say that it is a weather with temp. If we try to say rainy directly, that gives us a, a syntax error here. So we have to consider all of the cases that weather with temp can be. And if we wanted to maybe extend this further, we can have types that are declared outside of this, inside of this weather with temp, and use those types independently of each other. So this seems pretty useful. Can I use this for uh, existing types? Like maybe I want my function to be able to take in strings and ints. Well, you can, but be careful of doing it the way that you would expect it to work. You can't do int or string. As you can see, this results in an error. But we can do int with a constructor that is an int and string with a constructor argument that is a string. This is valid and we can use this now to create other stuff which takes in ints and strings. Can we use records? Well, let's try thinking of an example where we might use a record. So we had students before. What if we wanted to also be able to take in workers as well? So I'm just gonna copy and paste this example. And here you can see what I was talking about earlier where we can compose existing types with this variant structure. So we have students from earlier, like Bob, and we have workers, which are something completely new. So we can say that now we can create the person Bob. So let person Bob 
is a person. We can't directly say the old Bob because he's not a student capital here. We have to say that he is now part of the variant person by saying, give me a student out of Bob. And you can see that that compiles now. So let's create an example of a worker from Bob. Let's say he's graduated high school now. So let Bob the builder also be a person and we're going to go and say okay his name is still bob.name his age is still the same because he just graduated but his company is now builders inc and we have to as you can see there's an error right here because we have to wrap this all in a worker because he's now a worker so here are some variant patterns we oftentimes in programming find that we're not able to trust other people when giving us values they might not be able to actually give us a value in that case we don't have anything to go off of and sometimes this can result in you forgetting to pass a value or potentially assuming a value is there when it's not actually there. And we want to directly be able to tell before we run something if this is the case or not. So we have something called an option. And let's just assume like we're trying to make this option out of a string. So how would we potentially do it? Well, we're gonna start with a variant of course, and let's say we either have a string or in the other case we don't have a string so there is no string right so those are our two cases this is the only two things that our string can be there either can be a string there or no string at all there well we have tools to actually generalize this more to the rest of rescript rescript implements options in this manner there's a type called option, and after this option is a generic type. This means I can put any type that I want into this place. This is like a placeholder type. So in the case where there is something, there's of course some A, some type A exists, or there's none, there's no type A that exists. So let's define our own example of an option. Let's say let my string option and we're going to use the built-in option type here and we're going to give it of course in t in place of a a string and so in this case we're going to say that we do have a string we have some hello world but we don't know from the outside whether or not this is a real string or not a real string we don't know if that string is actually there or not. This is kind of why these are important. We can wrap values and not make any assumptions about their existence or not. Similarly, we have a pattern for results. Sometimes when you're interacting with other people's code, it might throw exceptions or not know how to handle the request that you gave it. For example, if I added you, asked you to add together turtle and waffles, you, you would have no idea what to do. That wouldn't make any sense. In that case, we might return none, but we could also potentially give the user some more information. So let's uh, take a crack at trying to define this. So my operation, we'll call this. Okay, so if the operation of adding is, is valid, we can say, okay, that's a success, and I'm going to give you back the answer wrapped in you not knowing whether or not the answer is correct or not. And if it's not, I'm going to give you an error, which is going to have some helpful string information attached to it. So in this case, from the outside, you get back an answer, and then you have to check both cases. I know that my question might have been wrong to you, so I have to be able to handle getting an error back, but I also know that my question to you might have been correct so in that case which is the good case I can do something with the int and so of course 
Rescript has this built in. It's called a result type, and we have two generics here a type A and a type B. And type A goes into the success branch, and type B goes into the error branch. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. The notes, as always, will be in the description.